Hello Internet and welcome to this day in history for the 5th of November. Today we have another double feature so to speak. We have the same day that are relevant on two different years but they're relevant for in many ways the same thing. In this particular case the course of Catholicism within the United Kingdom or well, at the beginning within the British Isles at least, and later within the United Kingdom. First, a little bit of backstory. Ever since Henry VIII founded the Anglican Church and took England out of Catholicism or the Catholic Church as we know it, the national character of the English have changed into a staunch anti-papist kind of mentality. It was especially punctuated by the rather bloody and religiously repressive regime of Henry Henry's daughter Mary, and especially, of course, after the attempted invasion by the Spanish with the Spanish Armada under Mary's little sister Elizabeth. So, where are we today specifically? We are, to start with, in 1605, because while I know Guy Fawkes Day actually in a few days, it was on this day in 1605 that Guy Fawkes was arrested on suspicion of trying to blow up the king and his parliament during the opening ceremonies of the new session. Of course, I'm not going to go into too much attention to the actual gunpowder plot. Suffice to say that a group of Catholic dissenters wished to basically perform a terrorist plot by blowing up Parliament with it, all the lawmakers, most of the higher ranks of the country, including the king, and then in the chaos create a new Catholic monarchy that would bring Britain back on what they considered the right path. Everything was stopped when on this day in the cellar below parliament with a huge number of barrels of gunpowder, Guy Fawkes was arrested and under torture quickly gave up the entire plot and the meeting place for most of his co-conspirators who were eventually arrested and executed most horribly. As you can imagine, this situation did not exactly endear the British public to the concept of Catholicism after the last 80 years of development. It became even worse worse following the civil war of the 1640s as some of Charles supporters were Catholic nobility and outside royalty such as the rulers of France at the time. But in 1660 the monarchy was re-established with the restoration of Charles II, the son of the executed Charles I. Charles II definitely had some Catholic leanings but he was if nothing else at least smart enough to realize that the British public would never actually really tolerate a openly Catholic king. It was simply no longer in the British national character to do such a thing and in fact they would view the move towards Catholicism as a, well, probably a context for another civil war to be completely honest. So he, while certainly leaning towards some kind of reproachment with the Catholic Church, remained a publicly staunch Anglican throughout his reign. His younger brother James, on the other hand, James II, absolutely did not. He became ever more partisan towards the Catholic Church. He became openly hostile towards the Anglican society of the middle class, lower class, in fact most of the upper class, and he involved Britain in some strong alliances with their traditional enemies such as France and Spain against the Protestant powers of Northern Europe such as the Netherlands and Denmark and Sweden. However, even then the English was willing to at least tolerate him for a short while since he didn't have any children and it was expected that when he died the throne would go to his eldest daughter Mary. Mary was married to William of Orange, the stadtholder or basically the ruler of the United Provinces of the Netherlands at this time and both of those were very staunch Protestants. In fact, William was the most powerful enemy of Louis XIV of France and his attempts to create a French dominated Catholic hegemony in the Rhineland and further north into Flanders and Valonia. So eventually as James had a son the situation became completely intolerable to the British and they invited William to come over with an army and rule them as king alongside his wife Mary the daughter of James. I have already mentioned 
mentioned this repeatedly in various videos and of course especially in my videos of the glorious revolution of 1688 I will of course as always link that below but that particular revolution meant that the British Catholics were completely put into a minority and put under penal laws and everything prevented from holding any kind of public office and was completely prevented from taking any of the higher positions in the realms of the English king for more than 140 years until Catholic emancipation in 1829. What is so special about this is of course that on the 5th of November William landed in England with his army during the Glorious Revolution which eventually pushed James and the Stuart dynasty off the English throne and also precipitated the various attempts by the Stuarts to regain the throne up through the 18th century such as Bonnie Prince Charlie. But anyway this is already running long. This day in history the 5th of November 1605 and 1688 two days that truly defined and diminished the status of Catholicism in England and to a certain degree fully place the Anglican Church and England on the side of the Protestants against the more dominant Catholic southern parts of Europe. I hope this has been of interest to you. Until next time, I have been the Sage and I wish you all a very happy day.